Hi guys, it's Just Modest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top fantasy romance and romance reads of 2021. Alright guys, so I was originally going to do a video where I just picked my top favorite for every genre for my favorite books of 2021. And that was really hard. So if you guys still want me to do that, I will, but I figured I would break it down by genre. So for this video, I'm just gonna be talking about my favorite fantasy romance and romance books. And there are a lot in this video. I'm so excited to share them with you guys. And if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram. It is linked down in the description below. With all of that out of the way, let's talk about my absolute favorite fantasy romance and romance I read in 2021. All right, so I'm gonna start off with fantasy romance. This book will come as no surprise to any of you because I am obsessed with the series. I've made many videos on this series and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the technically fifth book in the Akatar series if you count the novella and this is following Nesta and Cassian. And I was someone who absolutely hated Nesta from Akatar. I just thought she was selfish and spoiled. And I think Sarah J Maas did a really good job of just turning her around as a character. I know a lot of people felt similarly to me that they didn't love Nesta. And after reading this, I love her. I absolutely love her and I ship her and Cassian. And this was such a good story. There were some plot elements of this book that I didn't love. Uh, there was a certain plot line that I just thought was comical and unnecessary. But overall, it was a very good read. So happy I read it. I can't believe it came out this year. I feel like it's been forever since I read this. But this particular copy is from Nerdy Ink, and I will tell you it is absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed with it. I just put it on this morning. I do not know if these are still available. I'm sure they're gonna do a restock, so I'll leave the link uh, from where I got this down below in the description. But they also have Throne of Glass covers that are very similar to this that I also ordered. I'm hoping hint, hint, husband, that I get the Throne of Glass uh, hardbacks for Christmas because I'm obsessed with those covers as well. They're so pretty. But anyway, love this book. It was so good. Please read this. Even if you're not a Nesta fan, I think you will end up really enjoying this book. And next up is another very popular series that I absolutely loved. And that is The Crown of Gilded Bones by um, Jennifer L. Armentrout. So this is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series. I have, I believe, a whole reading vlog of me reading both this and A Court of Silver Flame. So I'll leave those in the cards in the description somewhere. But this was great. Um, I was a little bit worried after reading A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which is the second book. There were some issues. I didn't absolutely love that book, but I think uh, Jennifer L. Armentrout really redeemed herself with this one. I loved this third one. I know a lot of people weren't crazy about it, but I loved it. I thought it was action packed. I loved all the, like the lore and I just thought it was so good. Such a fun time, such a quick read and I cannot wait to see where this series goes. I will be doing a recap of this book prior to the next book, A War of the Two Queens come before that comes out. That way, if you don't want to go back and reread this, you'll have a recap available. I've already started rereading this. So that will come fairly soon. And yeah, I just love this series. It's so good. Um, I have a full description talking about what the series is about, but just for like a brief Synopsis, it follows a girl, Poppy, who's the maiden, that is kept away from society and she's veiled at all times by these godlike beings known as the Ascended. They have black eyes, don't age, and she ends up one day deciding she wants to live a little bit, goes to a tavern in disguise, meets a guy named Hawk who is the royal member or the newest member of the Rise Guard. He ends up becoming Poppy's personal guard and it goes from there and it's fun and it has paranormal creatures and it just has everything you want. Slow burn romance, there's a decent amount of spice, so good. Highly, highly recommend reading this series. Continuing with Jennifer L. Armentrout, we have A Shadow in the Ember. So this is the first book in the companion series to From Blood and Ash. Oh my goodness, this book was so good. So worth the wait. So this is following the first maiden, Sarah and Nyctos and their relationship. And I loved it. I think there are a lot of similarities between this and the first book. However, I fell even more in love with these characters than I did the main ones in From Blood and Ash. I just love Sarah's feisty personality and she's great. Now I will say I've seen a lot of people starting with this book before they read from Blood Nash. Do not do that. I believe this book does contain spoilers. I would read at least up to A Crown of Gilded Bones and then jump into this, but definitely give this series a shot. If you enjoyed from Blood Nash, you're going to love this. And my last super popular fantasy romance is 
The Zodiac Academy by Carolyn Peckman and Susan Valenti. I have an entire review of this. I'll leave in the cards and in the description, but this series is just so good and so addicting. Oh my goodness. So the latest book, um, Heartless Sky, book seven just came out. I still haven't gotten around to reading it. I just have so much going on. I can't wait to read it. I heard it has a really serious cliffhanger, so I'm a little scared, but I love this series. So this is following twin girls who find out are Darcy and Tori, and they find out that they are actually Fae royalty, and in order to claim their inheritance, they have to go to this Fae Academy. And when they get there, they find out that they have all of these elemental powers, but there's also these four elemental heirs that are kind of ruling the school, and it's a bully romance, and it is just such a fun time. I will say the first book in this is not my favorite, I think it sets up the world pretty well, but the writing isn't great. It really gets better as the story progresses. And by the time you get to the third book, you are going to be so hooked. Oh my goodness. So good. And I think the audio versions are actually starting to come out. When I started reading this, they didn't have any available. Maybe they had the first one available, but now I think they have up until book five. So definitely check that out if you're interested, if you like reading things or listening to things on audio format. But highly recommend this series. It's so good and I just absolutely adore it. So definitely check it out. All right, this next book, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it in YA fantasy or fantasy romance. However, I feel like the relationship is really what drives the plot. So These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. Oh my goodness, absolutely loved it. I have a review for it in cards. I'll put it in the description. This is following Brie, and she is a girl that lives in a world where you can go to the Fae territory and make deals with the Fae in order to gain wealth and prosperity. However, Brie wants nothing to do with the Fae. Unfortunately, her younger sister is kidnapped by the king of the Unseelie court. So Brie has to journey to the Fae territories to find her sister. And when she gets there, she ends up meeting the prince of the Seelie court and they form a relationship and he wants to help get her sister back. We also meet a gang of misfits from the Unseelie court who quickly become friends with Brie and try to help her and it goes from there. I really enjoyed this. I think there are a lot of similarities between this and Akatar. I talk about that in my review video. However, it did feel different enough that it didn't feel like it completely copied it. And I really loved Brie. I really loved the two love interests in this. This is a bit of a love triangle. And it was just a really fun time. I cannot wait for the next book to come out. I don't think it comes out till next summer or summer of 2022, but it's really good, highly recommend, especially if you're a fan of Akatar. I think you will really love this. Next up, we have two books I read because of TikTok. The first one is Guild by Raven Kennedy. And I will say I almost DNF this and I am so happy a few of you messaged me on uh, Instagram and told me to keep going, it gets better. Um, the first half of this book I was not a fan of, however, I was completely hooked by the end. I read the second book, I started the third book and I haven't finished it yet, so I really need to just like buckle down and finish it. But this is following Oren. It's a very loose King Midas retelling and she is solid gold and she is kept, kept almost as not a prisoner but as like an object of the king and all she really does is stay in this gilded cage and drink and is just kind of miserable and is pining after this king. And then later once she leaves the palace we really get to see her personality and we get to find out some more things about this world and it just really, the action amps up towards the end and I really, really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend. I will do a full series review of this once I finish. I can't believe it is the end of December and I haven't finished the series yet. I will definitely do that, hopefully in January. I wanna wrap up a lot of my series that I haven't finished by the end of January. That's gonna be my goal, but highly recommend, really enjoyed this. It was a very fun read. The other fantasy romance I read because of TikTok is Savage Lands and this is by Stacey Marie Brown. This is another series that I'm going to make a priority in January that I finish. This is following Brexley and Brexley is a girl that has lived through this like fae and human battle and she lives in the human lands and she's been trained as like a soldier and one day she's kidnapped or not kidnapped, she goes into fae territory uh, to do something and she's taken by the fae and thrown into this prison. And in the prison, it's almost like a gladiator style life. So the different prisoners fight each other to the death. And this kind of gave me a little bit of under the mountain slash prison healer vibes. I really enjoyed it. It is spicy. I got a little confused with characters towards the end, but I think that was me. I think I was listening to this on audio and I probably had it on like 2.5 speed and needed to slow it down. But overall, I did really enjoy this. I need to finish this series. I think it's gonna be really good. Everyone has told me they really enjoyed it. 
So high on my priority list and I highly recommend reading the first one. And last up for fantasy romance, we have Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. So the last book in, or the next book in this series, I believe is being released at the end of December, beginning of January, and I need to do a whole reread of the series. But the first book I loved, and it is following Fortuna, who is a nightmare, and her brother has been missing, and she's just been desperately searching for her brother. And one day, a fae shows up on her door and says, I know where your brother is, but you're gonna have to marry me to find him. And the story goes from there. It had everything. I think I talked about it in my book similar to Akatar part one video. And there are a lot of similarities, especially like Under the Mountain. It is a lot darker than Akatar. And it was one of the first like spicy fantasy books I read when I first started reading Spice. And I just really enjoyed it. I will say, I think it's the second book in this series starts to become a lot more paranormal. And it kind of reminded me of uh, the Charlene Harris series that True Blood is based on. And it kind of lost me, but then the next book brought it back. So I can't wait to continue with the series. And I highly recommend for anyone who likes fantasy romance. All right, moving into romance. This is gonna have like taboo romance, contemporary romance, and all of the other romance that I've read that I really enjoyed. So first up is Flock by Kate Stewart. So this is the first book in the Raven series, the entire series I loved. Definitely one of my favorite series of all time. I was weeping through this book. So this book in particular is following our main character who moves to a town this like really small town in order to claim her inheritance from her father who she's estranged to and she meets a guy named Sean and he kind of takes her under his wing and she becomes immersed in his world and I'm keeping this very vague. Now if you read the backs of any of these books you're not going to have any idea what the book is about and that is so purposeful because it's just best not knowing when you jump into the series. And I will give a slight spoiler, the love interest does change in the second book and a lot of people have messaged me on Instagram saying they haven't even finished the second book because they didn't love that. Keep going, it's so good. I felt the exact same way when I got into the second book and I was like, what is going on? But oh my goodness, the second and third book are just, it's amazing. I love this series so, so much. Highly recommend if you love romance. It is spicy but it's a very good mix of like spicy and addicting plot. It also has like thrilling elements and a little bit of mystery. So, so good, highly recommend. And next up is one of the more controversial books on this list and that is Credence by Penelope Douglas. So I was very nervous to pick this up just based on what everyone was saying. I am so happy I read it. I really enjoyed it. Um, check trigger warnings before you jump in. But this is following Tiernan who is orphaned and ends up going to live with her uncle and or her step uncle and his sons and it's about her healing and dealing with the fact that she had a very lonely life and also just her life snowed in with these men and yeah it's it's interesting did not think i was gonna like this book as much as i did and after i finished it i was like what did i just read but i think about it all the time and i really love where the book went and it explored some things i didn't think i would be okay with reading about and i was so Highly recommend this. It's probably one of my favorite Penelope Douglas books. Honestly, I wanted to put all of Penelope Douglas books on this list uh, besides Punk 57, just because I wasn't crazy about that one. But Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, uh, Hideaway, Corrupt by Penelope Douglas, all really good. Highly recommend her as an author. Like I said though, she really loves taboo romance, so just check trigger warnings. All right, so this next book is probably in my top five favorite reads of 2021, if I had to pick. Um, it's definitely high up there, and that is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I ended up reading three books by Colleen Hoover this week, and I had such different feelings about all of them. Um, this one was by far my favorite. You guys actually voted for me to read this in a poll against Ugly Love. I did enjoy Ugly Love. I just loved this one a little bit more. This is following Lily, who had a very interesting upbringing with her first relationship um, and her parents. Uh, trigger warning for domestic violence, there is a lot of it in this book. And her parents were very violent or her father was very violent towards her mother and she grew up seeing this. So when she becomes an adult, she wants nothing to do with that. And she is this very strong character. She opens this floral shop and she ends up being in a relationship with a guy named Ryle. And it's really just her journey of looking back at her past and how it's affecting her future. And oh my goodness, this book was just so sad, but so good. And I could not recommend this book. Please read this book. 
please, if you're very nervous, especially if you're nervous to jump into Colleen Hoover, just because I had heard such mixed things about Colleen Hoover, I think this one is worth a read. If you're gonna read a Colleen Hoover book, definitely pick this one up. It's really sad, but really good. Um, there is some spice, uh, not very much, but I just, I can't rave about this book enough. I really, really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. And next up is a pirate romance. <laughs> so, Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. Oh my goodness, it's the only pirate romance that I've ever read. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it does, once again, check trigger warnings for this one. It starts off really rough. It's following Bennett, who is the daughter of this noblewoman and a pirate. And she just loves her dad. Her dad is this very revered pirate. Unfortunately, in the very beginning of the book, he is killed, but she decides to take on his mantle and becomes a pirate herself and is very feared by everybody. She's just an awesome pirate. And then she ends up marrying this questionable individual. And in the very beginning of the book, he is following her and she is trying to get away from him. And while she is trying to get away from her husband, she is captured by a pirate hunter. And then the story goes from there. It's a fun time. It's a really, really good book. I really enjoyed this. I just, there's love triangle. Once again, you have the slow bird romance. You have a pirate and a pirate hunter. Check it out, really good, check your rewardings, but highly recommend, especially if you're new to pirate romance, I feel like this is a great one to start with just because of how good this book is, but definitely one of my favorite reads of 2021. All right, the next few are all contemporary romance. So this next one, I really contemplated putting on this list just because I gave not a negative review in my November wrap up, but I definitely didn't give a glowing review. And that is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. So my main issue with this book, first of all, if you don't know, Raylo fanfic, or more Adam Driver fanfic, following a girl in STEM who ends up fake dating one of her professors, and then it, that was a very brief summary, but it goes from there. The thing I didn't like about this is the writing was very repetitive, and there's lots of mentioning that the main character, Adam, is tall and has broad shoulders and is huge, and they just repeat it over and over and over. And I just found that very comical. I literally kept saying it to my husband. And honestly, I am someone who really enjoys small, tall relationship books. My husband is 6'4", I am 5'2". So I like that dynamic. I just didn't have to hear about it over and over and over again. However, I loved the story and I really loved Olive and Adam and I thought they were adorable together. And I keep thinking about this book and I like laugh to myself thinking about this book. So overall, I did really end up enjoying it and I honestly think it is a romance that I might go back and reread in the future. And it was definitely one of my favorite contemporary romances of 2021. That is why it is included here. So I do recommend this. I do think it's worth the hype. It just took me a little while to get there. All right, this last book is my favorite contemporary romance. I think of all time, I just really enjoyed it. And that is Betrayed by Emily Henry. So this is following Augustus and January. So January is a writer, and when she was in school, she always was very competitive against this guy named Augustus Everett, I believe. And they just always had like a competitive relationship uh, as writers. So now when January grows up, her father ends up dying, who she had a very close relationship with, and she finds out that he actually had a beach house and he might've been having an affair. So she is just heartbroken. She's also suffering from writer's block. So she goes to this beach house and of course, August is across the street and it a relationship obviously forms. They end up uh, making a deal where they're each gonna write in each other's genres. She writes romance. I think he writes like nonfiction uh, thrillers or horror or something like that. And I just really enjoyed this. I really loved watching January discover herself and grow as a character. I love the relationship. I just really, really enjoyed this book. So highly recommend, definitely one of my favorites of the year. All right guys, those were all my favorite fantasy romance and romance books of 2021. Please let me know in the comments if there are any other books that I didn't mention that you think were your top fantasy romance or romance books. Um, I feel like I've read a ton and I'm sure I missed a few on this list. And I said this already, but I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week, bye.